And those are fire bricks over there? Uh, they're Collins too. Um, exotic. They go to lots of times, I can see. What we have here is a brick kiln surrounding a whole lot of pyrolysis vessels inside. There's various various pyrolyzing vessels in here, stainless steel ones. And what we will do is pack fuel around them in the form of bits of wood like this and pack that all the way around. And inside there all those drums, well for example this is a pyrolysis drum that you can make out of a biscuit tin. And what I'm going to put in here is the Australian National Companies and Securities legislation. The only one that will fit in there. The master tax guide got pyrolyzed last week. That's all. Yeah, so that's nice family players. We can move it. Okay. So goes in, fuel on top. Out this end we've got a chimney which has been made out of an olive oil tin. Open one end, updraft, put the bricks on it like that. And a chimney. That. You'll have to have guy ropes. I normally drive a star picket in to hold it up, get it to a draft. The air comes in this end, you leave a couple of half bricks so that you can open that up, um, put air in there and light, light the charge and get the, the, the fire to go across the pyrolyzing drums and out the flue. Um, to seal the lid, we've got a framework that I'm told used to be a dog crash tip shop, which I've welded up so that it carefully fits the kiln shelf, which makes a wonderful thermal roof. Unfortunately, third world villages don't have this stuff because it's worth about 200 bucks a sheet. But you can use fiberglass bat, you can use more bricks on top of there, you can use a sheet of corrugated iron and um, fiberglass wall or, or bricks on top of it. Uh, it. You just have to have a good thermal barrier there because the a lot of heat's going to be lost. Heat doesn't rise, hot air rises. Heat radiates omnidirectionally, which means the heat from this drum is going down, sideways, in and up. So all directions have to be well insulated, which is why it's on a bed, the fire bricks underneath there as well. The hot draft goes up the chimney. You're looking at the chimney output to make sure it's clear and shimmering. And in Australia, especially in the outback, we have to have a spark arrestor to stop large amounts of um, uh, material escaping during the startup routine. Now, in the startup, the first 10 minutes of this is going to be the smokiest. And what we're going to build here next time is an afterburner which will have a charcoal fire pre-lit. The charcoal fire will start an updraft in the chimney and it's burning very cleanly because charcoal burns cleanly. We then light a fire at this end and the smoke gets drawn through up the chimney and through the charcoal and gets burnt in that first 10 minutes to 15 minutes of start up when all the greenhouse gases are being given off in this model. They'll be burnt in an afterburner at that location. Yeah, would, would, would you bring the air out a little bit lower? Is that what we do? Or should we build the afterburner high? Bring, bring, uh, build the afterburner high. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's fine. We can bring more bricks and do that. Well, that's, that's going to be the half that of it. That'll be the half, yeah. Just okay. around. Right. Yes. Well, it's just about to the top of the kiln now, so... The afterburner uh, will draw its hair from, uh, from, from the kiln. You'll have yes, to have a, a, a stoking hole. Oh, you need that though. You need a stoking hole, yeah. yeah. That should be lower down. Cool. Then we need to make this, this course down here. Well, that's the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So what I've got here is terracotta clay and a bit of sand. 
and that together makes a mixture called wadding. And you mix the sand in with the clay until you've got a good sandy clay and then pack it into any grooves that are going to leak anywhere. Now we can, uh, what I did was To move around a bit, isn't it? Hold it in here, So, what we've got here is the inverted drum with the wood fully loaded in it. I'm going to try and invert it and not lose the load and get it the bottom of the human. Did it. So we've got a seal on the flat base. And there are other pyrolyzers in here. With this one's got a coconut shell in it. Various other objects. These pine cones woven things, a bit more fungus attack rosewood. So all of those are going to go in there and then we'll stack it full of fuel wood. A few scraps of wood, I'm going to put a sandwich in there, pyrolyze a sandwich. So we can put some more in on top there too. Here we are at the final stage. No flue gases, in, uh, no smoke in the flue gases. It's radiating a phenomenal amount of heat. The tops at 450, the cores at 550. The whole thing is cooking in a delightful radiator for a, a lovely um, autumn evening come winter. When we remove the drums tomorrow, after it's all cooled down, um, we'll be able to put them in a, a, um, a biological solution, either a biological tea made of worm juice or compost juice, if we were bringing them out hot and we wanted to stop the charge from igniting, we'd dump it straight into a, a mineral bath of water so that the, when it goes from the mineral bath to the, uh, the, the inoculant, which is either compost juice or worm juice, then the, uh, the bugs have got something to, to grow on and grow in um, in the first quench. But we don't have to do that. If it's cool, it can go straight into worm juice. Cool char. But hot char will spontaneously combust if we opened any of these containers inside there they would just burst into flames and even after it's cooled down if I open some of these containers in here it, it, it could spontaneously combust in two days and that, so for two days you have to keep the charcoal sealed no air getting in so to avoid all that drama we just dump it straight into water as soon as we're finished because we're not using it for a fuel it doesn't matter if it's wet we're using it for the bugs in the ground high rise living conditions Five star accommodation. <laughs> if the lumps are too big, you run over them with a lawnmower. It takes about 20 seconds. Um, do it wet. If you run them over with a lawnmower and they're dry charcoal, you'll have a huge cloud of dust of charcoal everywhere. But wet is fine. Uh, and then it's ready to spread. The I, I, optimum size for biochar is less than one centimetre pieces. So you put the lawnmower over it until it's down to one centimetre and put it in the ground. Mm -hmm.